Welcome to Historic Facts in a Nutshell, where we transport you back in time to explore the greatest figures and events of the past, all in under 10 minutes. In today's episode, we're diving headfirst into the extravagant world of one of history's most infamous monarchs, King Henry VIII. Known for his larger-than-life personality and voracious appetite, Henry VIII's reign was filled with scandal, power, and sumptuous feasts fit for a king. From spit-roasted meats to peculiar delicacies, we'll reveal the hidden secrets behind each extravagant dish. And stay tuned to discover the surprising role that vegetables played in Henry's lavish feasts. Get ready to feast your eyes and enrich your historical knowledge as we bring you, Henry VIII's extravagant feasts in a nutshell. Extravagant feasts were a way to demonstrate your wealth and power. Imagine a grand palace, Hampton Court, where a colossal kitchen stretched across 55 rooms to cater to the royal court's insatiable appetites. This culinary wonderland boasted a staggering 14-course meal served to 600 privileged guests. At the heart of the feast, spit-roasted meats took center stage. The rich indulged in succulent pig or boar, a symbol of extreme wealth. Only the super-wealthy could afford the year-round luxury of fresh-roasted meat, tended to by dedicated spit-boys, whose weary job it was to stand beside a raging fire, turning the meat for many hours. It was a gastronomic spectacle like no other. Delights and forbidden pleasures. Grilled beavers' tails were cleverly classified as fish during the medieval period due to religious dietary restrictions. According to Christian tradition, meat consumption was forbidden on Fridays, and individuals were encouraged to consume fish instead. However, since beavers were semi-aquatic animals, their tails were considered to have fish-like characteristics. This allowed people to enjoy the taste and texture of grilled beavers' tails. While still adhering to the religious dietary guidelines of the time, it was a creative solution that satisfied both culinary desires and religious observances. Could you stomach a Tudor banquet from what you have heard so far? Let us know in the comments section below. Some of the Tudor showstoppers would be quite alarming by today's standards. One of the most visually stunning delicacies was the whole roasted peacock. Adorned with its own iridescent blue feathers, carefully replaced after cooking, the majestic bird boasted a gilded beak, truly a regal centerpiece. But the indulgence didn't stop there. Medieval cooks believed in utilizing every part of the animal, celebrating internal organs as delicacies fit for a king. Beef lungs, spleen, and udders, preserved in brine or vinegar, showcased the culinary ingenuity of the era. As we delve further into the captivating world of Henry VIII's feasts, we encounter more intriguing dishes that delighted the royal court. Black pudding, a sausage made by filling a pig's intestine with boiled, congealed blood, continues to entice adventurous eaters to this day with its unique flavor and texture during the festive Christmas season. A boar's head adorned with fragrant bay and rosemary stole the show, surpassing even the most elaborate floral displays. It served as the centerpiece, symbolizing abundance and celebration. And then, we come across the majestic, roasted swan, a delicacy reserved for special occasions. Its graceful presence graced the table, enhanced by a golden crown atop its regal head. This dish epitomized elegance and nobility, representing the extravagant tastes of the royal court. Sweets and festive traditions. No Tudor feast would be complete without a touch of sweetness. Marzipan, a delectable paste crafted from almonds, sugar, and egg whites, with hints of cinnamon and pepper, delighted guests as a post-meal treat. And during the Twelfth Night Banquet, a spiced fruitcake held a hidden dried pea or bean. The lucky finder would become the esteemed pea king, or bean queen, receiving special honors throughout the evening. Raising a glass to the royal court. At Hampton Court Palace, the grand feasts of Henry VIII were accompanied by an astonishing amount of libations. Historians estimate that annually, 600,000 gallons of ale and 75,000 gallons of wine were consumed. Ale, the popular drink of the time, provided nourishment and refreshment. While wine, imported from various regions, symbolized refinement and status. The logistics behind procuring such vast quantities were remarkable, with cellars filled with barrels and casks. Cheers to the legacy of wine and ale, reminding us that shared moments and connections are what truly enrich our lives. What would be your alcoholic drink of choice if you was in the Tudor court? Let us know in the comments section below. Amidst all the lavishness, it's worth noting that vegetables played a surprisingly humble role on the royal court's menu. Viewed as the food of the poor, vegetables made up less than 20% of the royal diet. But even so, they too have their place in this remarkable culinary tapestry. And there you have it, a captivating journey into the extravagant world of Henry VIII's feasts. From the opulent spit-roasted meats to the peculiar favorites and delightful desserts, Tudor dining was a true indulgence. 
If you found this exploration of history and gastronomy fascinating, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more intriguing insights into the past. Remember to hit that notification bell, so you never miss an episode. Keep your appetite for knowledge alive and savor the flavors of history. Thank you for watching.